Today we have another Saber review. I made a quick unboxing on my TikTok, so go check that out. Special thanks to Saber Theory for sending me another Saber. We are taking a look at the Padawan Annie Saber from Saber Theory. Obviously, this hilt needs no introduction. Okay, maybe a small one. Just a slight small one. No. Yep, this is a Tusken Slayer, not to be confused with the Youngling Slayer. First appearing in Star Wars Attack of the Clones, this saber is Anakin's first saber he ever constructed, surviving most of his training until stumbling into a Geonosis droid factory. <laughs> Not again. Obi-Wan's gonna kill me. The Saber comes with a 7 8 inch blade, charger, extra wrenches and retention screws, Saber stand, NeoPixel blade plug, SD card reader, and an instruction manual. Also, a pretty awesome carrying case. Right out of the box, like the Saber Theory Revan, it's a fingerprint magnet, but I never really care about that too much. It's a short hilt measuring at 10 inches, which is pretty small for me. The hilt is also really skinny. I would say this is the perfect Saber for a Padawan, and not a full Jedi Knight. You know, because it's the Padawan Annie. The Saber is not one-to-one -one scale, like other Saber hilts on the market. So if you're looking for a perfect movie accurate replica, the Saber is probably not for you. Yet the main inaccuracies are with the dimensions. There are some details of the Saber that are off, like the cover tech being on the wrong side. But that's just nitpicking on my part. Speaking of the cover tech clip, it's fastened very tightly and won't come loose on the belt clip. Regardless of that, the Saber looks great and does feel like Anakin's. The internal chassis is painted gold to resemble metal, which is cool and kinda a letdown. The Saber separates in multiple ways to get access to the electronics easily without damaging the Saber. There are some flaws to the hilt as the emitter shroud does become loose from spinning. The control box doesn't do anything and is mostly there for decoration. It's also very sharp on the edges. The two LED lights on the side of the hilt wobble a bit, which is a little annoying. Other than that, very few cons to the Saber. Now let's go through the features and check out what the Saber does. So when you get your Saber out of the box, it'll be in sleep mode to get it out of sleep mode. And just keep in mind, this is not the activation. This little tactile switch on the back is. Just hold it. Power on. And it'll tell you to power on. So for the volume of the Saber, you actually do this when the Saber is off. And there's only three settings. There's low volume, there's mute, and there's high volume. When activating the Saber, you don't only need to use the tactile switch on the back, you also have the opportunity to use gesture controls with the Saber. To change fonts on the Saber, you just hold the Saber button the second. until you get the next font. So when the Saber's on, one button press for blaster deflection. For lockup, you hold the button and contact something. And for tip drag, you just hold the saber for the saber button for one second. And that's tip drag. To change color when the saber is on, you just hold the button for two seconds. And it'll start to cycle through all the colors. And when you reach a color that you really like, you just press the button once and it saves that color for that font. On the Saber, there are a few included additions like different ignitions and blade styles, but the timing for button presses is so confusing that it's really hard to go through all of them without accidentally going to a new menu like the Saber ignition as opposed to doing the blade styles. So I'm just gonna do my best and hopefully it works out. So that's the Hunter Ignition with the standard lightsaber blade so there's no flicker or anything. This is the Flame Blade and that was the uh, Broken Ignition. 
photon ignition. Standard ignition. So this right here is Ghost Blade. And essentially it only lights up when you move the blade around. It's cool. I don't really use it that much though. Warp ignition. <laughs> Blaster Blade. Blaster Blade is actually really cool. So you turn on the lightsaber and then you just press the button and it travels down the blade like a blaster bolt. Really cool effect. Phaser ignition. Scavenger ignition. Scavenger is essentially like Ray Skywalker saber where it flips from green to yellow to blue all in one go. It's pretty cool. Candy blade. Another one of the blade profiles. And as you can see, the LED lights on the side of the hilt actually flash based on what the blade is doing, which is also really, really cool. That was the stack ignition right there. There's plenty of different other blade styles that I'll probably go through for a TikTok video. It's just really confusing and without seeing any flashing lights and getting the timing off, it's just really difficult to switch in between ignitions and blade styles, but it is fairly easy to use other features like blaster deflection, drag tip, lockup and just changing the colors, which is what most people are looking for. But the blade styles are just a little bit too difficult to actually set. So this is the Xenopixel version. There's a Profi version as well. The Xenopixel version is $419.99 on Saber Theory. I wouldn't recommend this for spinning too much simply because the hilt is too small and the activator box right here, the activation box is a little sharp as mentioned earlier in the video. That doesn't mean you can't still try and spin it. It's, you can spin it. Um, I just wouldn't recommend it for dueling because of that seven eighth inch blade. And it's a, uh, yeah, it's very thin. You won't survive any dueling with this uh, saber, but it's definitely cool to display and show off to your friends. I don't think there's anything left to do in this video, but to show me spin it outside in the snow. <laughs>